Hello everybody, I'm really glad you can make it your day. If you're new around here, thanks for dropping by and if you are a returning viewer, it's good to see you again. I really do appreciate you. So, this video is supposed to come out on Halloween. I think it's Saturday, Halloween that is. So if it does, happy Halloween. And if it comes out a few days later when it probably will, um, it's a time zone thing, it really is. And I'm saying this because October's on. We just forget about the entirety of November. And that means it's December already. Wow, time sure flies, doesn't it? And because it's December, wow, so soon, it's time for a winter whitewash video. Now there's lots of ways to do a winter whitewash. There's lots of videos out there, there's lots of products, but here's the thing, I don't have any of those products. So this is how I do a winter whitewash. I'm not saying it's the best way, it's my way. And the whitewash, we're gonna be doing it on Dragon's initial tiger in 172nd scale. And the whitewash itself, does have this household product in it, so this title is not clickbait, 100% confirmed. As for what the product is, well, you're just gonna have to watch the video. So enough of me talking, let's check out that tire. So here's the tire so far. I must confess, it's not fully completed. There are a few parts missing, like the wheels over there and the engine brakes, but we don't really need those for the purposes of this video. As you can see, it's overall German Grey, which I have distressed quite a bit, and the way I did this was that I initially started off with a dark version of the German Grey, and then I distressed it with a lighter German Grey. And this won't really be seen underneath the winter camouflage, but I did it just because I felt like it, and it just proves to be more practiced with this technique. I also did a bit of work on the tools, I painted the exhaust, but I'm not really too concerned about the tools because it's going to be covered in white. Speaking of white, this is what I use for the winter whitewash. And this is it, the household product, a giant bottle of rubbing alcohol. I don't think the percentage really matters. I think any sort of rubbing alcohol works. And white paint. And you have to make sure that you get the cheapest white paint possible. And um, a third thing is this Windsor Newton oil paint, but it's not really necessary. But back to the acrylic paint. Just cheap white acrylic paint. Get it as cheap as you can. And here's why. The rubbing alcohol. It works as a thinner, you can use it to thin Tamiya paints, but it's very aggressive. And when you mix it with a very cheap white paint, it breaks down the paint into the pigments. It's a really interesting effect, I have to say. And I think this is because of how cheap the paint is. I have tried this technique with Vallejo and it just didn't work the same way. I think um, Vallejo is a much better quality paint. It's too good for this technique really. All we need is the cheapest white paint we can get. That is like a dollar from Walmart and rubbing alcohol. And you mix these together and then you just apply it on. And as a result, what you'll end up getting are these very patchy, there's all of these inconsistencies I'll just show you what it looks like. So let's take a look at some previous examples with this technique. And here are two examples of how this technique is supposed to look. The BT7 and 72nd steel, that is my latest attempt at it. And that half track was my first attempt at this camouflage, I believe. But let's look at the BT7. This is what I mean. It's very, I guess, inconsistent. There's all of these patches going on. And personally, this is what I look for when I picture a, I guess, a whitewash that's over the vehicle. There are no patterns. I want it to be it's more interesting than just a flat coat of white. And you can also use this technique to achieve patterns. You can see on the hood of that 251, I achieved some stripes and there is a bit of dots that I've also applied. Um, there's one next to that terribly bright green streak. And here's the thing with this technique. The way that this paint dries, it's kind of chalky. And because of that, you can scrape it off with like a cocktail stick or a you know the back end of your hobby blade, and as a result, achieve these really fine scratches that chip off the way that paint you know actually chips. So enough of me talking. Let's apply it on the tiger and see if it lives up to those expectations I have. So before I actually show you the application of the whitewash, I wanted to show you what I meant. What happens when you thin out this white paint with rubbing alcohol? And my camera can't really focus on it because, you know, it's white, but on the sides of the cup, that's what I'm talking about. Because the alcohol is so aggressive, it just turns the paint into its pigment, and as a result, we get this very patchy look when we apply the whitewash. So, let's finally get ahead to doing that. 
Here I am applying our whitewash to the turret roof, and the turret roof is a great place to show off this technique. Since the paint scheme I'm going for, there isn't really anything going on on the turret roof in regards to patterns. It's just a solid coat of white, or rather as solid as I can get it with this technique. And the reason why there was some whitewash on it before this clip started was because I was doing some experimentation with the amount of you know, paint to thinner I had. You know, just like everything I do, I do not save my ratios for this. And this is something where I think you don't really need to, since, you know, you can really go both ways. You know, it really depends on the type of look you want to create. More alcohol means a patchier look, and more paint means a smoother look. But once again, as smooth as this technique can get. And here's the thing, right? You can sort of see what I'm, I was going on with earlier about everything being patchy. This will dry, but you can just see as it's wet, it is looking quite patchy already. And the way I applied this, you know, it doesn't really matter. I try to do vertical strokes just because it's easier for me to do on camera, but you can do, you can apply this paint in patterns just as long as you, I guess, cover up what you need to. Because of the way that this alcohol dries, really, because it's so patchy already, you can kind of afford to just, you know, apply it however you want to. And in some cases, you may want to apply this paint in patterns as opposed to just vertical lines. But I guess just for the, um, the ease of filming as well as to, I guess, simulate gravity, although this doesn't work whatsoever. I'm just doing vertical lines. Once again, you don't need to do vertical lines, it doesn't really matter anyways. That's one thing I like about this technique, you can sort of apply it however you want, and we can adjust the final result as we go along with some white acrylic paint, although we'll get to that later. Here's how it looks with the alcohol mixture fully dry, and one thing I didn't mention is that this technique leaves a bit of lumps, and you can just scrape these off with a damp brush, however you can go a bit too far, as is the case. However, this is the gray primer, not the gray plastic, and so we can fix this all with our next step, which is to blend everything together with some diluted white acrylic paint. And because this paint is diluted, we still retain the patchiness, but we are able to blend it out in a way that isn't so stark. Here I am working with acrylics just to blend everything out, and I'm using Vallejo's Off-White, and it's thinned a bit. It's not too thin, but it's not too thick. Of course, we want it thin so we can retain all of those patterns we've got with the alcohol mixture, but we don't want it too thick because we still want to keep the alcohol mixture, and we don't want everything to be covered up by a monotone coat of white. If I could compare this to anything, it'd be towards figure painting because you don't want your paint too thick, you don't want your figures to have acne, but you still want it to cover a bit. And one thing to keep in mind, I do go over this multiple times. So the way I'm working with the paint, as you can see, is mainly in vertical motions. This is what I'm doing for the most part, more than anything. And this is really what, when I'm you go and simulate the effects of gravity. Of course you can just paint it on in any which way and in patterns, but you've already got the patterns going on so I don't really feel the need to do any patterns. What we're looking for is coverage, we already got the patterns with the alcohol mixture.
here is our tiger so far. I've just finished applying all the acrylics and here it looks. It has been blended out quite a bit. The patchiness isn't, you know, as stark as it was before the acrylics, but the patchiness is still there and all of those inconsistencies in the opacity of the white and I, I like it. I mean, it's not as terrible as it was before, but it still retains that patchy look, which is what I look for. One thing to keep in mind though, depending on how much acrylic to rubbing alcohol you use, things can get a bit patchy and, I mean not patchy, a bit lumpy. And that's what sort of happened. Um, I'll bring it in closer to the camera in a, in a little bit. You can sort of see it there, right there on the side of the hull. Yeah, so you do get a bit of lumps. This might not be an issue for you, and once again, it's dependent on how much um, thinner to paint you use, and it could be dependent on the scale. In 48th or 35th scale, it might not be as, I guess, heavy as it is in 72nd. But this is how it looks so far, and we are going to do a bit of work with oils, but personally, I don't really think you need it. And if you were to just weather it, I think this would work perfectly fine. So let's move on to the oils. I'm getting ready to work with the oil paints. And what I did with these oils was I used them to add some streaks more often than not. Yes, I used them in some cases to blend a few things together, but 90% of what I used the oils for was streaking. And here's why. I took a look at the whitewash so far. And I thought to myself, what am I missing? I have inconsistencies and patchiness from the alcohol mixture. I have an overall blending effect with the acrylics. But what I was missing was streaks. And yes, because I was working vertically with the acrylics, I sort of had some streaks going on. But they were very subtle and I wanted some more pronounced streaks. Just to add a bit of interest as if, you know, the whitewash wasn't interesting already. Yes, I could have used the acrylics to add some streaks, but I wanted a bit more variety. And since no two white paints are the same, they're all slightly different, I felt that I could have a bit more interest with the whitewash. So yes, that's the main reason why I'm doing streaks with the oil paints. If you're doing something similar to achieve a whitewash, you might not use oils for streaks. You might use them for blending, but once again, you have to take a look at your whitewash so far and think to yourself, what am I missing? And then you can use your various products to, I guess, achieve the effects you want. But in my case, once again, I was missing some streaks, so that's why I'm using oil paints for that. Here's how the finished whitewash looks. Although I say that it's quote unquote finished, there's still definitely a bit more that I could do, especially along the lines of chipping, but I think that would make this video a bit redundant. I wanted to show the application of a very patchy whitewash, and I think that this technique definitely succeeds in that regard. Once again, this isn't the perfect whitewash, and it may not work for you depending on your vehicle, your time frame, the scenario, it might not work for you, but this is what I look for in a whitewash, and I think it gives you that eastern front look it's definitely not pretty but it does the job. It may not be the most accurate whitewash out there but it does well for an impression and to be honest that's all I need. So while rubbing alcohol works perfectly well for whitewash I found it to have a few more uses so if you'd like to see that let me know in the comments. I definitely like to make a video series on my homemade alternatives to the purpose made weathering products since that's the way I function for the majority of my time in this hobby. But enough of me talking we've reached the end of the video. I'd like to thank you for watching, especially if you've made it this far. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing. As the old saying goes, it only takes a second and it really helps me out. 
Also consider sharing the video, hitting the notification bell, and leaving a comment. I do go through all of them, and I have some pretty interesting things planned for the channel. Once again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Whenever that is. Thank you.